Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is going to be for the popcorn floral dishcloth and this is pattern number 611. I have several samples to show you here today. You can use three colors, four colors, five colors. You can use as many colors as you wish. Now for today's video I'm going to use three colors and I'm going to make up this dishcloth here but I'm going to change the colors up a little bit. So let me show you my samples and again all my samples today have been made using the Premier Home Cotton by Premier Yarns. It's 85% cotton, 15% polyester, and that extra little bit of polyester really helps make these dishcloths stay durable, keeps the colors brighter longer, and just I just really love this yarn. Now you can use any cotton yarn you prefer, but this is my preferred brand. So here is my first sample. I just made this with the white popcorn flower. I put green here for my leaves pink in the outer edge and then a white border. So that's my first sample. My second sample, again I used white for the popcorn flower and then brought the white out because I thought that really popped a little bit more. When you see these three here, they're all made with the white center bringing that white to the outside. It just really pops the colors on the inside. So that was my pink one. Here's my blue sample with that little bit of darker green. And then I have that red sample with the sage. And then I chose not to use white, but used a cream color with that pastel blue and lavender. So that gives you a little bit of different look if you don't want those bright whites. Here's a sunny yellow with a little bit of pink and lime green. And then here's another pink one. Let me show you the difference between the two pink ones. How when you add the white center and then this is the yellow. So if you have a lot of leftover cotton yarn, then these are excellent patterns to use up some of that extra cotton yarn. Because it does not take much for the center. If you choose to use a different color for the center, it doesn't take much to make the leaves or the flower. So just a great way to use up those scraps. So let me measure. These should be about eight and a half inches in diameter from point of the shell to the point of the shell. This one's actually about eight and a half inches. This one's a little closer to nine, about eight and three quarters. So it just depends your tension. So about eight and a half inches across to nine inches, depending on your gauge. Gauge is really not important with this pattern. It's a guide, but it's really not that important. So for today, these are the three colors I'm using. This is color number 38-08 pastel pink. And then I'm using this bright white. This is color number 3801 white. And then this beautiful sage green, color number 38-15. Now I give the color name and I give the color number. And the reason I do that is sometimes some of my subscribers, the only way to get the yarn is they have to order it online. When I get really detailed and give the color name and the color number and all that pertinent information, it's because some websites will use the color name and not the color number, and other websites will use the color number and not the color name. So it does get confusing sometimes when you are online trying to order those yarns. So these are the three colors I'm using today. You're also going to need a size H8 five millimeter crochet hook. So choose your colors, choose your yarns. Again, I'm only using three colors. You can use as many colors as you wish. So I'll be right back and we'll get this project started. I have my yarn attached to my hook. I just tie a double knot. You can start it any way you wish. We're going to start with the chain four. So yarn over your hook, pull it through the loop on your hook. That's your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two. Yarn over, pull through, that's three. Yarn over, pull through, that's four. You're going to skip the first chain. You're going to come down to the fourth chain from hook or the last chain from your hook. And we're going to slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. 
what we done is we created a small ring and we're going to be working right into the center of this ring for the center of our dishcloth. I'm going to take this little piece of yarn here that's left over from starting my chain. I'm going to hold it right up against my work and I'm going to work through the center of the ring and around that loop of yarn. So to start round one, we're going to single crochet in the ring and chain two and we're going to do that seven times. Now we do not chain when we start this round. We're just going to insert our hook right into the center of that ring, front to back, and work your first single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that ring. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That's your single crochet. You're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to do that a total of seven times. So that's our first of the seven. We need to do that six more times. Insert into the center of the ring. Work a single crochet. Chain two. One, two. We need to do that five more times. Insert into the center of the ring. Single crochet. Chain two. So that's three of seven. Insert into the center of the ring. Work a single crochet. Chain two. That's four of seven. You can take and grab a hold of that chain and just pull those stitches back to make room for the rest. Insert into the center of the ring. Work a single crochet. Chain two. Insert into the center of the ring. Work a single crochet. Chain two. We need to do that one more time. Insert into the center of the ring, work a single crochet, and chain two. One, two. I'm going to pull my hook out. I'm going to make a double stitch count. You can count one single crochet or you can count by the chain two spaces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and you end with that seventh chain two space. Now we're going to go up and we're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet. Here's your beginning single crochet. Insert under the top two loops of that stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my work. I usually chain two, one, two. I take my hook, pull up and pull that yarn out. Grab that yarn, take your two fingers, just pull down and it knots your work. Now for round two, we're going to be working into the chain two spaces only. So what I'll do is I'll hold this yarn right up against my work and I'll be working right over top of this end to weave that end in. So now I'm going to grab my pink and we're going to get our popcorn flower started. I have my pink and when I join I leave about a five inch length and I just hold my new yarn right up against the old color that I fastened off. I do not tie it on. Now if you prefer you can tie it right here where you fastened off to secure it. I usually secure my work when I'm all finished. That's why I leave such a long end. And then that gives me enough yarn to maneuver with the yarn needle to knot it and weave it in the ends. I'm going to insert into that very first chain two space where we fastened off here. Insert into that first chain two space and pull your new color through. Now for our popcorn stitches in this round, usually a popcorn stitch has five double crochet, but we're only working four double crochet into our popcorn stitches. The first popcorn stitch is made differently because we have to chain three for that first popcorn to start our round. So let's begin. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. 
you're going to yarn over, insert into that same space, yarn over, pull through that space, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You just made a double crochet. We need to make two more double crochet, yarn over, insert into that same chain two space front to back and you can see my hook is going underneath those strands and that helps weave in those ends. Work a double crochet, yarn over, insert back into that same space and work a double crochet. So we have our beginning chain three and then we have three double crochet. You're going to pull up on your hook, take your hook out, come back to the top of that beginning chain three, insert your hook into the top of that stitch, and then bring your hook over and insert it into your dropped loop. Tighten up your loop and then you're going to pull that loop through the other loop on your hook and it crunches that together and makes a nice little popcorn stitch. You're going to chain two, one and two. Now we're going to work a second popcorn stitch all into this same chain two space. We're going to work four double crochet and then form our popcorn stitch. So yarn over the hook, insert back into that same space, work four double crochet. There's one, yarn over, insert back into that same space, work your second double crochet, yarn over, insert back into that same space, work your third double crochet, yarn over, insert back into that same space, and work your fourth double crochet. Take your hook and pull up a loop and then come back four stitches. One, two, three, four. You're going to insert into that first double crochet of that four double crochet group. Insert back into that drop loop, tighten up your yarn, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. Your popcorn stitch is formed and you're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to do that in each chain two space around, but now we do not chain three for that first double crochet. We only do that in the beginning of the round. So now we're going to find our next chain two space. This is the start of the repeat. So if you need help, you're going to click back to this point of the video where I say this is the start of the repeat of round two. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain two space, work four double crochet. There's one, two, three, and four. Pull up on your loop, take your hook out, return to the first double crochet of that four double crochet group, insert into the top of that stitch, insert back into your drop loop, tighten up your yarn, and pull your drop loop through the loop on your hook. Your popcorn stitch is formed, you're going to chain two. One, two. And then we're going to do it one more time into that same chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same chain two space, and work four double crochet. One, two, three, and four. Pull up the loop, take your hook out, return to that first double crochet of that four double crochet group, insert into the top of that first double crochet, insert back into that drop loop, tighten up your yarn, and then pull the drop loop through the loop on your hook. Your popcorn stitch is made, and you're going to chain two. One, two. That is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and repeat. You're going to work 
one popcorn stitch, chain two, two times in each chain two space around. So that's one popcorn stitch, chain two, one popcorn stitch, chain two, in each chain two space around. I'll meet you at the end of round two and show you how to join. I'm over at the end of round two and this is what your work should look like. You have a total of 14 popcorn stitches. You have seven chain two spaces. You have two popcorn stitches and two chain two spaces in each chain two space around. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, 14 popcorn stitches and you should have 14 chain two spaces in between. So now we're going to go ahead and fasten off and join. We're going to come up to the top of this beginning popcorn stitch. So here's our popcorn stitch. It's a little hard to see but I'm coming right up to the top of my popcorn stitch and I'm going right down through the top center of that stitch and out through the back and I'm going to slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it back through that stitch, and pull it through the loop on your hook. I'm going to fasten off. I chain two, one, two, pull up my hook and pull that yarn out. Grab that yarn, take your two fingers and pull down and it knots it. Now when you look on the back of your work, if you worked your stitches over those ends, you can see it weaved it in. So you just want to tug just a little bit to tighten up those stitches so you don't see the white where you started over here. And then you're just going to trim that off. Just make sure that you don't cut into your other stitches. And this is the nice thing because it weaves your ends in for you when you're crocheting those stitches over the end. So I'm just going to leave this hang. So when I'm working stitches that you can see this color, then I let it hang on the back and I weave that in with a yarn needle in through my stitches so you can't see it. So if you are working stitches and you can see this yarn going through and a different color over top, then don't try to do it that way. Leave it hang and weave it in when you're done. So now I'm going to grab my green, my sage color, I have my green. We're getting ready to start round three. And round three, we will be working the shell stitches here. And this is what I call the leaves. This is the center of my flower. The popcorn creates the flower. And then these shell stitches create the leaves to our flower. So I'll be using the sage green. Now I'm going to let my pink hang. I'm not going to work over that. I'm going to weave that in when I'm all finished with my dishcloth. I'm just going to take my green, leave at least five or six inches, and again you can tie your yarn on to the beginning here where you fastened off if that makes you feel better and secures your work. I use the method where I just pull my yarn through and secure it when I'm finished. I'm going to insert my hook into that first chain two space of the round. We finished off here. This is the first chain two space. We're only working in the chain two spaces and we're skipping the popcorn stitches. I'm going to pull my new color through and I'm going to start with a chain three. One, two, and three. We're going to work a double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet into that same beginning chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same beginning chain two space, and work a double crochet. You're going to chain two, one, two, and now we're going to work two more double crochet all into this beginning chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same chain two space, and work two double crochet. One, yarn over, insert back into that same space, and work your second double crochet. You're going to chain one, and you're going to skip the next chain two space. Now we're going to start the repeat. 
we already skipped this chain two space, so our repeat begins. You're going to work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet into the next chain two space. So let's begin. If you need help, this is where you click back on the video. This is the start of the repeat for round three. Yarn over the hook. You're going to skip that chain two space. You're going to insert into the next chain two space and work two double crochet. One. two, chain two, one, two, yarn over, insert back into that same chain two space, and work two double crochet. One, and two. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip the next chain two space, and that is the end of the repeat. I'll show you one more time yarn over, you're skipping that next chain two space that you already skipped, insert into the next chain two space, work two double crochet, one, two, you're going to chain two, yarn over, insert back into that same space, work two double crochet, one, and two, you're going to chain one, and you're going to skip the next chain two space. So go ahead and start where I say this is the start of the repeat. You're going to skip that next chain two space. You're going to work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into this next chain two space, and then you're going to chain one. You're going to skip that next chain two space, and that is the end of the repeat. You're going to repeat that around. I'll meet you at the end of round three and show you how to join. Over at the end of round three, this is what your work should look like. You made your shell stitch in that first chain two space. You chained one, skipped the next chain two space. You worked a shell stitch in the next chain two space, chained one, skip that next chain two space and you work that around and you should have a total of seven shell stitches and seven chain one stitches around. You should end with that chain one and now we're going to go up and join into the top of that beginning chain three. Count up one, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of that chain. Yarn over, pull through that chain and pull through the loop on your hook. So round three is finished. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my work. Again, I cut that yarn. I chain two. I pull up on my hook, pull that yarn out, grab that piece of yarn, take your two fingers and just pull down and it knots your work. Now you can use whatever method you prefer to fasten off. This is just how I learned and that's how I do it. So I'm going to grab my white and I'm using white next for the center portion of the doily. So where this blue is, is where I'm going to put my white. If you want to use a different color, use your own judgment on what color you want to use. So I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my white and we'll get round four started. I have my next color. I'm using white. I'm using about a five or six inch length that I'm going to let hang to the back of my work. And when the dishcloth is finished, I'll come back with a yarn needle, secure the end, and then weave those ends in. So I'm going to return back to where we fastened off round three, and I'm going to insert my hook into this beginning chain two space, and I'm just going to pull my white through. We're going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into this beginning chain two space. Insert into that same beginning chain two space, yarn over, pull back through that space. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, and that's a single crochet. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work another single crochet all in the same chain two space. Whoops insert back into that chain two space, work a single crochet. 
we just made a little single crochet v-stitch. I'm going to let that white hang behind my work and out of the way and now I'm going to go over and we're going to work a double crochet chain two double crochet into this next corresponding chain two space two rounds below and we're going to pull those stitches up to the current level of work so what that means is this is the next chain two space this is the next corresponding chain two space two rounds below so we're going down one two rounds and we're working our stitches into this chain two space yarn over the hook drop down two rounds one two insert from front to back into that next chain two space that's two rounds below work a double crochet you're going to chain two one and two trying to get that yarn end out of my way it keeps jumping over there sorry about that yarn over the hook insert back into that same chain two space two rounds below one two insert right back into that same space and work a double crochet we just made a double crochet v-stitch. Now we're going to start the repeat. We're going to skip all these stitches and we're only working in the chain two space of the shell stitch and the corresponding chain two space two rounds below into that next chain two space. So let's begin the repeat. If you need help with this round, this is the start of the repeat for round four you're going to insert your hook into the next chain two space of the next shell. Insert your hook, work a single crochet, you're going to chain two, one, two, insert back into that same chain two space and work a single crochet. Your single crochet v-stitch is made. Next we're going to work a double crochet, chain two double crochet, in the next corresponding chain two space two rounds below yarn over the hook you're going to go to the next corresponding chain two space two rounds below one two that's down here insert from front to back yarn over pull that yarn back through work your double crochet you're going to chain two one two yarn over the hook insert back into that same chain two space two rounds below and work a double crochet your double crochet v-stitch is made that is the end of the repeat I'll show you one more time and then you can continue around insert your hook into the next chain two space of that next shell stitch work a single crochet chain two insert into that same chain two space work a single crochet your single crochet v-stitch is made you're going to yarn over you're going to insert your hook into the next corresponding chain two space two rounds below one two insert from front to back right into that chain two space work a double crochet chain two yarn over the hook insert back into that same chain two space two rounds below and work a double crochet and that is the end of the repeat so click back on the video if you need help you're going to work a single crochet chain two single crochet into that next chain two space of that next shell then you're going to work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the next corresponding chain two space, two rounds below, one, two, right into this space. And then you're just going to continue repeating that around. So go ahead and work around. I will meet you at the end of round four and show you how to join. I'm over at the end of round four this is what your work should look like you have that single crochet v-stitch and then you have your double crochet v-stitch you repeated that around this is what it looks like you ended with that double crochet of that last double crochet v-stitch and now we're going to go up and join our round you're going to insert right into the top two loops of that first single crochet of the round and we're going to slip stitch yarn over pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook 
So round four is finished and now we're going to start round five. For round five, we're going to be working into the chain two spaces of each V stitch around. So we need to get over to that first chain two space of that first V stitch, insert your hook into that chain two space and slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it through that space and pull it through the loop on your hook. Now we're in the spot where we need to be to start round five. We're going to begin with a chain three. One, two, and three. This beginning chain three counts as our first double crochet. You're going to yarn over, insert back into that same chain two space, work a double crochet. You're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work two more double crochet into the same space. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same space, and we're going to work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same space, and work your second double crochet. So what we're doing is we're working a shell stitch, and we're going to work that in each chain two space around. So this is the start of the repeat. We're going to work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet into the next chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain two space, work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over, insert into that same space, work a second double crochet. You're going to chain two, one, two, Yarn over, insert back into that same chain two space, work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same space, and work your second double crochet. Your shell stitch is made. So all we're going to do in this round is work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in each chain two space around. I'll show you one more time. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain two space of that next V stitch, work two double crochet, one, and two. You're going to chain two, one, two, yarn over, insert back into that same chain two space, and work two double crochet. There's one, and there's two. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in each chain two space around. I will meet you at the end of round five and show you how to join. I'm over at the end of round five. This is what your dishcloth should look like so far, and we only have two rounds to go. So let's go ahead and join this round. You're going to insert right into the top of that beginning chain three, one, two, three, insert into the top of that chain, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round five is finished, and now we're going to start round six. To begin round six, we're going to start in the chain two space, so we need to slip stitch into this next stitch and then into the chain two space. Insert into the top of that next double crochet stitch right under those top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. We still need to get over here, so you're going to insert right into that chain two space, yarn over, pull through the chain two space, and pull through the loop on your hook. Now we're at the starting point of where we want to be to start our round. We're going to start and we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. This beginning chain three counts as your first double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same beginning chain two space, and work a double crochet. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same chain two space and work a double crochet. So far we have our beginning chain three and two double crochet. You're going to chain two, one, and two, 
Now we're going to work three more double crochet all in the same beginning chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that space, and work three double crochet. There's one. Two. and three. So this round we're going to be working three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet in each chain two of each shell stitch around. So let's begin the repeat. So if you need help, this is the start of the repeat for round six. You're going to yarn over the hook, insert into the chain two space of that next shell stitch, work three double crochet. There's one, two, and three. You're going to chain two, one, two, yarn over the hook, you're going to insert back into that same chain two space, and you're going to work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Your shell stitch is finished. So that's all you're going to do to work around this round. I'm going to show you one more time. We're going to work three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet into each chain two space of each shell stitch around. Let's begin again. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next chain two space of that next shell stitch. Work three double crochet. One. Two. And three. You're going to chain two. One, two. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same chain two space, and you're going to work three double crochet. One, two, and three. And that is the end of the repeat. Go ahead and work your repeat. You're going to work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, in each chain two space of each shell stitch around. I'll meet you at the end of round six and show you how to join. I'm over at the end of round six. This is what your work should look like. You should have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in each chain two space of each of those shell stitches around. We're going to go ahead and join and then fasten off so go up to the top of that beginning chain three, insert your hook into the top of that chain, one, two, three, insert your hook and slip stitch, yarn over, pull through that chain and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my work. Again, leave a little bit of a longer length so you can maneuver that yarn with your yarn needle. I chain two, one, two, Pull your hook up and pull that yarn out, grab the yarn, and then pull down on those two chain and it creates a knot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to bring the pink out for that final border. So let me show you a couple of these dishcloths again. This one I had the white flower with the white border. This one is showing the pink flower like we have here, and I'm just going to bring that pink color out for that final round. So you can use whatever color you wish. It's just nice when you carry that center color back out to the outside edge of your design. So I'm going to grab my pink. I'll be right back, and we'll get round seven, the final round started, and we'll finish our dishcloth. I'm back. I have my pink for my outside color. I'm going to leave about a six inch length and I'm just going to pull that new color through. So I'm going back up to where we fastened off. Let me zoom up just a little bit more. We fastened off here and we want to start here in this beginning chain two space of this first shell. 
insert your hook into that chain two space and just pull that new color through. You're going to begin with a chain three, one, two, three, and this beginning chain three counts as our first double crochet. Now what I'm going to do is when I work my stitches in this first chain two space, I'm going to work them right over this end and then I'm going to let it hang back. It just helps secure it a little bit better. So let's begin. We're going to yarn over, insert back into this same chain two space, work a double crochet, you're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work two more double crochet into this same chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that space, and work two double crochet. One, and two. Our shell stitch is made. You have that beginning chain three that counts as your first double crochet, a double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. So next we're going to work a triple crochet, chain two, triple crochet in the next corresponding space two rounds below between the current shell and that next shell. So when you look at your work the instructions sound a little complicated. It's not that hard. Here is your current shell. Here is your next shell. We're going into the next corresponding space which would be here two rounds below. So you drop down one, two rounds, and we're going right between those two shell stitches right here. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook twice. You're going to drop down two rounds, one, two, between the current shell and that next shell. Insert from front to back. Yarn over, pull that yarn back through your work. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over and pull through two. You made your first triple crochet and you can see it's two rounds below. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to repeat the triple in the same space. Yarn over twice, drop down two rounds, one, two, insert into that same space from front to back, yarn over, pull back through that space, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. You just made a triple V stitch. So we have our shell stitch and then we have the V stitch in between those shell stitches two rounds below. So now we're going to start the repeat. So if you need help with the repeat, you click back on the video and you'll start here where I say this is the start of the repeat for round seven. You're going to yarn over the hook. You're going to insert your hook into the chain two space of that next shell stitch. Insert from front to back and you're going to work two double crochet. One, and two. You're going to chain two, one, two. We're going to work two more double crochet into the same chain two space. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same chain two space, and work two double crochet. There's one, and there's two. Now we're going to work our triple crochet, chain two triple crochet, in the space two rounds below between the current shell and the next shell, right in that next corresponding space, right? This is our current shell here, so drop down, so this would be the current shell, that would be the next shell. Yarn over twice, drop down two rounds, one, two, in the space between the current shell and that next shell, front to back, work a triple crochet. You're going to chain two, one, two, yarn over the hook twice, drop down, insert your hook into that same space, two rounds below between the current shell and that next shell, right where you worked that first triple, and work a triple crochet. Your triple V stitch is made. So you can see the pattern shell stitch, V stitch, shell stitch, 
v-stitch so let me show you one more time this is the start of the repeat yarn over the hook insert into that next chain two space of that next shell work two double crochet one two chain two yarn over the hook insert back into that same space work two double crochet your shell stitch is made you work two double crochet chain two and two double crochet all into that chain two space now we're going to work our triple crochet chain two triple crochet two rounds below in that next corresponding space between this current shell and the next shell right here two rounds below yarn over the hook twice you're going to drop down two rounds one two to the space between the current shell and that next shell insert from front to back work a triple crochet you're going to chain two yarn over the hook twice drop down two rounds one two right into that same space you worked that first triple insert from front to back work your triple crochet and that is the end of the repeat so you can see you're going to repeat two double crochet chain two two double crochet into that next chain two space and then you're going to work a triple crochet chain two triple crochet two rounds below right into that space here between the current shell and that next shell right into that space go ahead if you need help click back on the video repeat that pattern around I will meet you at the end of round seven and show you how to join I'm over at the end of round seven this is what your dishcloth should look like we're going to go up and join and then we're going to do the fun part and I'll show you how to weave in those ends so let me zoom back up we're going to go over and count up to the top of that beginning chain three. One, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of that chain three. Yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. Again, when I fasten off, try to leave a longer length, maybe five or six inches, so you have enough to maneuver with the yarn needle. Chain two, one, two. Pull up on your hook, pull that yarn out. Grab that piece of yarn, use your fingers, pull down, and it knots your work. So let me show you the finished dishcloth. This is what it looks like. Very pretty, bringing that inside color back out to the edge. That bright, crisp white just makes it pop. So now I'm going to show you what we all love, and that's weaving in those ends. You're going to make sure all your ends are on the back side of your work. This is the right side. You're going to flip it over. Oh, goodness. Don't we just hate these ends? So let me zoom up and just show you a little of what I do. You may have your own method, and that's fine. Just continue using your own method. I get all these out of my way and then I'll pick one. I'll start at the center down here. I didn't leave enough yarn. It's a little short, so you have a little bit harder time. That's why I say it's better to have a longer end than a short end. So let me just get that weaved in. Now this already has a double knot, so I do not have to knot it. All I have to do is weave it in. So what I do is I make sure I match my leftover yarn with the exact color. You don't want to weave it in the green or the white because you're going to see it. The other thing about dishcloths is you really need to make sure it has a double knot because you're using these hard. You're going to be using these washing dishes. They're going to be going like this and they're just going to be really used hard. So you really want to make sure these ends are really weaved in extremely well. I'm just going to take my yarn needle and what I do is I go down that stitch right down through the loops of that stitch and I work my way down here to the base of all these other stitches. So what I do, now my end's really short, I'm just going to go right through and underneath the post of these stitches here at the base. I'm just going to pull them through several stitches. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump one stitch and I'm going to come back in the opposite direction. I came this way. I'm just going to jump over one stitch and then I'm going to go back underneath those stitches and work back over and come out. I really wish this end was just a little bit longer for me. And then what I do is I'll turn and do it one more time. I jump like one stitch. I'm having a hard time because my yarn's too short. And then I just go under a couple stitches. Just make sure it's nice and snug and secure. And going in and out several times just really helps secure that yarn. You're going to take your scissors and then you're going to trim the end. And you're just going to continue doing that. Now let me find an end that's not double knotted. One that I started with. So now I'm going to show you what I do if the yarn was started, the, the yarn when you pull it through to start your round. So this did not have a knot. So all I did was pull this through. So there's really nothing to secure it. So what I'm going to do is join this end. And when you look at your work, when you look at these ends that are weaved in, now see this one? You can see this knot right here. This has the knot, so I don't have to worry about knotting that. I just weave it in. This one has a knot where I end it off, so all we have to do is weave that in. You have to worry about the ones that you cannot see the knot. These are the ones that you have to knot before you weave in to secure that work. So what I do, I'm just going to try to show you the best way I can. So what I'm going to do with this is I want to get up here where these are a little loose so I'm just going to weave my yarn I'm going to go across the top of this and underneath the center of that and then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm turning my work as I do this because I'm trying to maneuver it you want to get to where these stitches are really secure where there's more work done not where it's nice and open and airy so I think I'll just go over here to this. I'm going right here. There's a little piece of yarn here. I'm going right through that loop of that stitch. And what I do is before I pull that all the way through, see how there's a loop here? I take my hook and I go back through that loop and that creates my knot. Then just use your fingers and pull that down. Make sure it's snug. Don't let it have a big loop in there. You just want to take it down and form the knot so it's kind of invisible and it works into the stitches and then what you're going to do is you're just going to weave it in and out through those stitches and then I go down through and it's very important take the extra time make sure you get that weaved if you have to turn your work turn your work bring it back down through you're going to make sure you go in and out and back and forth a couple times just to secure that stitch and then I'm going to go up through here because the stitches are tighter. It's always best to work through the stitches that have the tighter... Whoops, I lost my end of my yarn. So let me put this back one real quick. And then I'll just finish this one. And then, like I said, these stitches are really loose. So if you just move your hook in and out through those, they may come out. So you actually want to go through parts of the stitch that are extremely tight. So this part, you can see the stitch is tight. And then I'm just going to go right up through that stitch underneath the white. And then you just fasten off and make sure you do not cut into the other stitches. And it makes it invisible to see. You cannot see where my ends are. I'm going to finish weaving in the rest of my ends. And then I'll be back and show you the front side and the back side. I'm back. This is the front of our dishcloth. Congratulations. You've done a wonderful job. When you measure it from point to point, it measures eight and a half inches. So right on track. And when you weave in your yarn ends, this is what it looks like in the back. You see no yarn ends, so wonderful. So thank you everybody for stopping by and crocheting with me today. Again, this is pattern number 611. It's the popcorn floral dishcloth. The PDF pattern is available on our website, and I have that link right in the description box. And if you can't find the description box, you can just go to our website, creativegrandma.net, hit that shop button, then hit the pattern button, scroll down until you find the pattern. Also, while you're on our website, make sure you check out our free patterns we have to offer. Thank you, everybody, and until next time, 
Happy crocheting!